Welcome aboard, everybody. It's going to be a great ride. We're down to the semifinals here in Las Vegas. Welcome to the Las Vegas Open and the Rio All Suites Hotel and Casino here in fabulous Las Vegas. 96 players started out, four remain. The focus of our attention right here on table number one, Lee Van Corteza from the Philippines and Chinese Taipei's Ko Ping Chung. And it does promise to be a great match, a very close one indeed. I'm Jim Weich, coming to you remotely from Toronto and very happy to be joined by Chris Reinhold. Three hours time change in Los Angeles. Chris, welcome aboard. Hey Jim, how are you doing today? It was an amazing day so far at pool today and I can't wait to get this match started as well. Yeah, we were treated to an unbelievable master class of pool, courtesy of FSR against Fedor Gorst. Shot a thousand, beat Fedor 4-0, 4-0, two sets to love, and I'll tell you, he sent the alarm bells ringing in all the players still remaining in this event because they've got to find another gear if they're going to compete with him. But everyone very capable like you so aptly put it chris as we were as we were chatting just prior to this match you still show up to play that's right little code a break zero zero first game of the set one ball on the side two ball going just a little out of reach here Yeah, we always talk about how important it is with this short format. Still two out of three sets, but in the third set, if it gets to 3-3, three, three, well, we have treated to a shootout. And both of these players, no strangers to the shootout. They've had to win a shootout en route to the semifinal. And that was fortunate enough. I saw Co play earlier in the week. And a match that he looked solid. I'm not going to say real otherworldly, but but solid as he as he normally does. Daniel yeah, kind of debating here. Held to him. Shot clock's running down. I think he's banking the ball. Thoughts of a two-way, but I don't think it got there, Jim. No, and he's left nothing but a combination for Lee Van Corteza. And we chatted also about Lee Van. Very unassuming and just kind of saunters around the table, but the players know what he's capable of. Yeah, Very quick quiet story here. I was... Well. Quick story about Lee Van. I was 19 playing the World Pool Series that Darren Appleton started hosting, and uh, he was one of my one of my first matches. And we were playing a race to nine or seven, but he basically ran eight, whatever the amount was. He ran one up until that number. So race to seven, he ran six on me, and uh, that's my first time I ever saw Lee Van Cortez, and it kind of stuck with me ever since. Very highly regarded, and he's been around the game for a long time. Yeah, and Alex Pagalion actually says that he's the most talented player that he has ever seen, which is a very crazy thing, very crazy compliment from uh, someone like Alex Pagalion. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah, Alex would be one of the more talented players that I've ever seen. For him to say that about Lee Van Corteza speaks volumes. Yeah, what are you going to do with the eight here? Are you going to try to push it out a little bit? It's kind of risky playing shape for that six after... Well, you know that's what he's thinking about right now possibility of the bank on the eight obvious 
obviously where it's situated. Possible 8-9 combination. A little trickier. Yeah, and it looks like he's shooting the 8-9 combo next, but I would prefer the bank in my if I were playing, but if he likes the combo, then I think he's got to go for it. Well, he's left himself right down the line, Chris. Yeah, put, gave a good stroke on that ball for it to still go in after hitting the rail. Good pure stroke, and here you just want to cut the eight ball ever so slightly, as just, as if you were trying to hit the eight to the outer left, right side of the pocket, right there, but lost the eight a little bit. surprised that he elected to stop the cue ball there instead of going through and because it almost looked like the eight was always going to be tracking in that direction and making the nine but what were you saying about talent again I think they called a foul I think the shot clock went off he didn't call an extension Wow mark that one down referee having a little word with Lee Van now but well if that's a time foul just careless and there's Christmas come early for Koping Chung how about that Wow I'm not sure if Lee Van can challenge that or not because it's already done and over with but uh that's that's a brutal way to lose that rack, especially after making that really tough eight ball bank you just made. Well, and you know, for us, and I, can, I certainly can't speak for you, but um, we don't hear a lot in the audience. It's, it's very muted because we're, we're doing this remotely. Normally when we're on site, we can really hear the, the shot clock winding down. And, and again, I didn't hear, I didn't really hear anything. And I didn't hear the referee you know, let Lee Van know that it had been a shot clock violation prior to him shooting the eight. It was obviously very close, but I mean, no argument from Lee Van Corteza. So that tells us that uh, our referee in charge here and one of the newer referees from the European Pocket Billiard Federation. You know, Lee Van's one of the nicest guys you can meet, too, so I don't think he's a big arguer, but I I just, that's a very crucial game against, uh, you know, someone like Kopin Chung, where, you know, this could be the whole set. Well, I have little doubt that's what they're discussing right now. Go just waiting for things to settle. Maybe Lee Van thought that if he has an extension and it's winding down, they'll automatically apply it, which happens in some tournaments. Either way, it's in the books now. one nothing to Koping Chung. And a dry break. Ten ball does not seem to be on as a carom because the one ball is so close to the rail. Um, I'm interested to see what he does here because I'm, I'm kind of unsure on what I would do given this decision. on the bank.
Uh oh. Let's go on the side, Jim. Uh, it's a pretty acute angle into that side pocket, and the queuing is at a premium given that white so close to the cushion. I can't see him going with this in the side, Chris. What a shot it would be if he made it. Wow. Like you know, on. when I saw the angle, yeah, when I saw the angle from in behind his cue, it didn't look nearly as tough as it did from our overhead perspective. But that's still a great shot. Good safe there. It's one of those safes where you don't want to put it right in front of the left-hand pocket because then you can kick it one rail in potentially. So being being kind of observant on where your your object ball and your cue ball is is very key at this level. Look at this kick. Yeah, are there anyone better in the world kicking than the Filipino stars? I mean, when Efren and Bustamante were around, I mean, they wrote the book. They educated everybody with kick shots. Nowadays, everybody jumps so well. Yeah, yeah it's, um, you know, they like you said, they did write the book, and everyone's been always trying to hit the ball, but they never knew that there was another dimension, and they really opened up that dimension. And I think Lee Van might have bought himself a shot. Long distance at this two. Well, he can definitely get through to it. It might have a little too much angle for the three to go into the pocket where his hand's at. He might have to come play the same pocket. Wow, what a stroke. Lee Van one, Chris zero. <laughs> Does it get there? Nice position left right there too. Yeah, how sweet was that one? One of a handful of players still using a traditional wooden shaft. A lot of players have gone with the composite shafts now, the carbon fiber. certainly appears to have put in that time foul out of his mind. And that's the only real mistake he's made. He miscued there. Doctor Q's wife, Miss Q. <laughs> <laughs> he told me that when I was thirteen or fourteen. 
and uh, it's still funny to me every time, and I don't know why. Again, a good recovery. Get himself back on course. 10 deposited and 1-1 one, one confirmed here at the Rio. Lee Van Corteza, Koping Chung. The referee <laughs> and Lee Van have a lap was... now, as you said. Easy going fellow, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he really is one of the nicest people I've ever met in the pool world. And he has secured the break in rack number three. First set, race to four. And as you'd expect, not many empty seats. And there weren't many empty seats even at the first match, the 10 a.m. match local time. Yeah, especially as we a lot of the players assured. are getting knocked out. Yeah, we knew we were going to be assured Good of legend. a new champion once Fedor Gorst had taken out Viktor Zelensky in the last 16. So there'll be no repeats. Look at that break. One ball. Yeah, crushing. A little unlucky. No clear path to the two. So quite likely to push out. But these players have been targeting that one to the side pocket. Where to push and looking at, yeah, looking at the lay of the land here, Chris. It almost looks like the two ball might well be the key ball in this rack. Everything's in the open. One thing though, you don't want to leave Ko a jump. You'd rather him kick than jump. <laughs> and scratch that last thought that I just put forth because. He has just tied the five up and pushing out. effort there from Co. Wow. Beautiful shot there. Well executed. What a hit. He can't go beside the six because he's going to hit the six. So he's got to go the other way, which he might just put him right behind this six ball and just tap the cue ball there. Just try to put the cue ball around about where the seven ball is now. Just like that. He said jump this. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Need a step ladder. <laughs> Oh, 
ball in hand there. Well, we had a about three quarters of the ball exposed, but he needed to contact that going in, not coming out, because it was never going to be hard enough for a rail. So with ball in hand, that safety exchange, one by Lee Van Corteza. Yeah, I thought he was going to remember that push nine. out that eight ball to clear up the sticks. Yeah, remember that nine that he pushed up against the five? Now that's come to Coe's aid because that's the cause for concern now for Lee Van. having a look it may be available from that right side quadrant if you can get the cue ball below the nine that five could be on it'll tell us a lot the way that he plays this yeah, I believe it is yeah. now has he gotten low enough no, I think he's going to clear it out and just leave it right behind the nine. I I guess we'll figure out who's correct here. I, I have no clue if he can see enough of it to actually... Yeah, it looks like he's stopping the ball there. I am wrong. Good call, Jim. <laughs> well, it was tough. I mean, he had the angle on the four. It looked like he could have taken the cue ball over there to attack it if if he wanted, so I had to believe it was going to be on the way that he played the shot. But again, these camera angles can be pretty deceiving, Chris. I connect the dots from here. And Corteza has taken Coping Chung back to safety school because it was the safety play and those little exchanges that he won that have really forged the wins in these last two racks. Two one advantage. This all Asian clash. And they might they might be best friends by the end of this. <laughs> if if Lee Van wins. <laughs> Have you been following any of the players in particular this week? Uh, I was following Tyler because, you know, I like to root for the Americans and I always like to see uh, him do well in these events. He's been to two finals, I believe, in these kind of events. So yeah, he plays well in these generally. And after his last match with Shane, where he played not so great, I was... Uh, Glad to see that he came back and played well for quite a few matches. Yeah, I know he was uh, he was 1-1 in his quarterfinal. I, I didn't catch whether or not he won or lost. Did he get through to the semis? No, he um, he lost to Carlo in the shootout uh, at 5-5. So was, they were perfect until 5-5, and then Carlo made the sixth one or the. Oh, no, it was the fourth one. Okay, so they, they each made three. Carla made the fourth shootout shot, and then Steyer missed the last one, which was kind of brutal, but uh, he played really well the whole match. 
saw an all Filipino final. Still very much on the cards with Beato in the other semifinal. Mind you, he's up against a juggernaut in the form of Francisco Francis, or Francisco Sanchez Ruiz played just flawless against Fedor Gorst. And a missed bank attempt there. These Filipinos, they play all games well. Banks, one pocket, the rotation games, they play them all. Three in the side, avoid the six. Plays at a quicker pace than does Levan. equally as efficient. Four games in the books and nothing between these two. And Co will break in rack number five. Thirty thousand dollars up for grabs the eventual winner. A hundred thousand in total prize money. And there you can see the tail of the tape. Van Cortez uh, been dominating in terms of table time, but the score doesn't really indicate a 70 to 30 ratio differential, does it? 100% break success from Lee Van Cortez and just 50% from Ko Ping Chung. You know, I think a lot of this is born from that time foul where in the first rack, Lee Van Cortez did all the work and was at the table, I in the 10, and the time foul was called. Co made one ball to win rack number one. The weight transfer of his break is just very good. The timing is great, and that's why he gets so much energy on the ball, and he just hits it so square, all the weight transfers to the rack, which just explodes out of there. But either way, after all that being said, the five and the seven are tied up, so uh, we'll see what he does with those. Cue ball by the four, Jim. One in the middle of the table. Interesting shot there. Hard to go behind this ball with the angle he has. He's gonna have to kind of twist it a little bit because it's going a little short. So he's gonna have to lengthen it out just a little bit there. There you go, really good shot. But did he get a, no, left a shot. 
and he's opened the five and seven up as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the obvious key shot to this rack is making the one. It's really straight, and there's a lot of blue, a lot of real estate in between the cue ball and the one ball here. But if someone could do it, it's this man. Not that man, the man at the table. <laughs> That's right. Wow, beautiful stroke there. Let's go on the side. Three ball side. It must. These are the shots where Van Corteza, Lee Van, really excels with just creating things that it looks like there's nothing going on. So I think he's either going to follow this with high right and come out one, two rails back to where it is now for the four, or he's going to draw. Yeah, he tried what I said the first time, but just hit it a little too thick. Yeah, that was a tall ask, knocking that in. And a 4-10. Looking for an early finish. A lot of distance between the 4 and the 10. Is he carrying them? You have to go for the combo, in my opinion. Yeah, dead center. Well played. Co won the first rack, and he's taken the last two to go 3 2 in front in our opening set. He raced to four, so he's in control. Nice combination there to seal the deal in rack number five. You know, and if you watch all of the streams that a lot of the Taiwanese and the uh, Co brothers host, he plays the same mode all the time, 24-7. And it's just reinforcing his mechanics, and everything he does just is the same all the time. So when he plays pool, it's this kind of mentality all the time, which when he finally gets to a situation like this, he's just locked in. We've got a Predator Tour event in our club next weekend. So all the Arcos balls will be adorning all our nine-foot tables. Be the fourth one we will have hosted. We get big fields. Alex Pegalion won the last. Oh, just spun into the corner pocket. Yeah, Alex and Johnny Mora and our colleague commentating here, Eric Corlifson. They finished one, two, three in the last Predator stop in our place. Yeah, his bridge hand came up on that, and I think that's why the spin happened. Uh, if he kept his head and hand down through the ball, that's generally when the, the squat of the cue ball goes and your aim will be accurate. Uh, one to the two, it's kind of... He got a little far on this, but he's going to come low right English, come down to the end rail, and come back out to the three in the side. And it looks like this rack should be his, Jim. I'm going to quickly correct myself, Chris. John Mora actually won the last Predator event at our place. I was thinking about it as I was speaking, and uh, he beat Alex in the final. So my apologies, Johnny. You... Uh, you're, you're the defending champ for the Predator events in our place. He 
he's not quite as fundamentally sound as a lot of the European players. And, you know, you, you see players like Fedor Gorst and even Ko, when you watch the cues, it goes through the white. I mean, a little bit of movement doesn't always stay on that line. And he sure does get the job done. Yeah, I think if you could have one word to pin to a lot of those Filipino players, it's feel. You know, they really feel the game. Yeah, I wouldn't want anybody to uh, to take lessons from Francisco Bustamante in terms of fundamentals. I don't know if you ever stood behind him and watched that back arm. It almost goes in a circular motion. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, what Mark Wilson always told me is as long as you do the same thing every time, that's where consistency builds. And he goes through so straight at the last stroke that it really just, I wouldn't recommend it like you're saying, but it, it works for him, for sure. Well, our first set of the semifinal, and we're going to be treated to a hill-hill decider. And Lee Van Cortez will break rack number seven. Let's see which one is going to put the win in the books. Yeah, I've known Mark Wilson for a long time, too, one of the premier coaches in America. Done a bit of commentary with him over the years, Chris. Been a very good friend. Yeah, he's one of my favorite people in the pool, and he was my first official coach when I went to Lindenwood in St. Charles, Missouri. Um, I was on the pool team, but I went to college as well for a year. And, um, yeah, he, he basically rebuilt my fundamentals and got me going on the right track, but I did it on my own for so long. When I was uh, about five years into it, that's when he kind of took me by the, the reins and taught me a bunch of things that I needed to know, which uh, I'll always thank him for that. Yeah, you're a good judge. Solid guy, Mark Wilson. Big fan of the game. Hill Hill, where's the one? A little bit of spin on that break. I wouldn't put it past him to bank this one ball because it affords shape on the two ball. Took the words right out of my mouth and it wouldn't shock me at all. I mean, he went for a similar bank shot on the eight in the opening rack when he didn't adhere to the shot clock. But it wouldn't shock me to see him play this shot. Mind you, he hasn't called it yeah, he's yet. He's going off the right side. Yeah, he had the seven as a buffer there to play safe, so. But I think he's left the edge of the one out for Coe as well. So a very thin chip on the right-hand side of the one for Ko Ping Chung. And he might even get tight enough on the rail to where he can come into the eight ball and hide behind the three. We'll see what he does. Extension. Not quite. And there's a path for this one. I don't know if it offers too much angle for him to hold for position to the two, though. And if there's no positional rewards, no sense in taking the risks. He may have called the 10 here, did he? Extension. Yeah, well, I'm just glad he definitely extension. called an extension. No, he was playing the one. Just kill the speed. How about that shot? Wow. I heard him call. I heard him call a ball. And I saw him looking at the 10. I just had a funny feeling he was going to try and bank that one down towards the 10 and duck for cover with the white. 
But what a shot holding the cue ball. The 3-8 combo must be on. This is the shot for the match here. I mean, for the, the first set. Beautiful. He's still got some work to do, though. Got to get that cue ball back up Does table not. to attack the five. No, straighten it out. Talk about taking what the table gives you. Sorry, no Jim. No kidding. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, he is probably as good an example of that very statement as there is playing the game. Never forces anything. At least doesn't do anything out of his capability. Plays within himself. And that's a big win for the opening set for the very humble man from the Philippines. Lee Van Cortez, a 4-3 win over Ko Ping Chung in set number one. And it looks like both players are gonna take a very short break, Chris, and uh, I'm gonna follow suit, take a quick break too, and we'll be right back with more action. Don't go away. Well, looking at the statistics, Lee Van Cortez pocketed three times more balls than did Coping Chung. 48 to 16, even though it was a 4-3 win in terms of racks for the opening set. So 
So we kick off set number two. And still no friends at the table for whoever breaks. Just haven't been able to put anything together. I mean, if the one doesn't pass the seven, maybe make the three and go down table. Same kind of idea. I'm a little surprised he's shooting at this because I just don't see any good aggressive options. Uh, he did bring Lee Van back. This is tricky, and you know what? I agree he's, with that uh, decision. He's going to show us something here because I'm really not too sure what he can do. How's that? Not too bad. Using the seven, controlling where the one was going and the cue ball. Don't know if he's got behind that five, but he's very close to. He certainly is putting seven up with the nine. to say he got a little fortunate with that roll assuming the 1-8 isn't on then it might be three ball side. yeah he's calling the three sorry the 1-8-3 that three right over the side pocket oh wow look at Lee Van Cortezel Kind of smiling as he comes to the table. That probably shocked him, too. Was there room for the eight here? Apparently. Apparently so. <laughs> but that's uh, that's wow. a typical Filipino, though. He comes to the table. They just enjoy playing this game. And I, very often, Chris, you know, I talk about having a Filipino mentality. And they carry no... No baggage, do they? they? I mean, whatever happens, happens, and they just move on. Yeah, well, I mean, he's also already in the money, so I feel like he's already in a happy mood, you know? Well, what's his game plan here? To try and get that seven into the open. Obviously, he's going to have the angle on the five. That's what he's looking at. Love to be able to get the cue ball over to just nudge that nine out of the way. That would be ideal. He's got the angle on the five. But it's a too much angle, Jim. Looks pretty thin, doesn't it? He certainly can hit the seven. Don't know whether he can get over and flick that nine out of the way. No. He tried to get to the nine. He didn't. That's the reason he's got himself in a little bit of trouble. As you said, Chris, just a little yeah, too much little angle. Too. 
I think he didn't catch enough of the seven there. Let's see how this turns out. Who can live with that from there? He played that at a speed to give himself a chance to get fortunate. I don't know whether that seven has poked itself out enough for Rudy Van Corteza to be able to knock it in. It's close. Yeah, I think you could see it. But just he's deciding whether he just wants to come straight across between the 9-10 or draw out for the nine. Extension. Glad he called it that time. What a shot. Special. Sheer brilliance. What a shot. Never looked, yeah, never looked out. So creative. Yeah, that's one of the best shots Beautiful we've seen. Out. And he opens his account here in set number two. And a shot on the seven. Worth another look. I can quickly update you on our other semifinal. Carlo Beato has secured the opening set against FSR as well. As strong as Francisco played against Fedor Gors, well, he's run into a Filipino juggernaut just like Ko Ping Chung has here. So an all Filipino final very much on the cards as we speak. Especially with a break like that. This, yeah, they're in the second set over there, 1-1 one, one in racks. Stop shot on the four with the five, where you have a little more, yeah, yeah, he's just all feel right here. Just taking up the table gives him confidently. Maintaining the angle from the six to the seven. Low right English, draw out past the middle of the table for the seven of the side. Trying to get straight in on the seven. 
here he'll use a little bit of high right to come off the rail for the 8 in the corner. So he has some angle to get on the 9 on the other side of the table. Beautiful. Keeps it simple and he's always looking at the right angle for position. Again, when you have that cue ball under wraps the way Lee Van Corteza does and is illustrating here in rack number two, you just make the game look real easy, and it's not. Break and run out. First one of the match thus far, courtesy of Lee Van, and 2-0 now, his lead in the set that would see him through to the final. And little Coe's just hoping he can get a shot and uh, an opportunity. how this all dressed up for him in this rack. Does the four pass the eight, Jim? Well, we're going to have a look in a sec here. That'll be very important, certainly, from Lee Van's perspective. Wow. If it does, they're all there. And I think it does. Just about left himself over top that five. That would have been disaster. As it is now. Looking at the four. Pretty sure the four goes by the eight. Five, same area of the table. Six there too. If he could jump out to a 3-0 lead, that would definitely make a statement. Looking like he's going to play the five in the side right by him. Keeping it simple, not trying to do too much. These side pockets can be a little weird sometimes from this angle, so you have to be careful and make sure you get through the ball. Will he try and maintain the angle on the six to play the seven into the opposite corner pocket, or will he eye up the seven-eight combination? No, well, he's gonna. He's stayed the right angle. He's gonna play the seven to the other corner. Got to try and drop. Just nicely onto that seven. Very rarely does he ever wrong angle himself, though. Always seems to be with the right angle. Now the way things are looking, Chris Coe is just hoping for a chance. Yeah. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, the man dictating the pace. Lee Van Corteza, 3 nothing in the second set, already with the first set in the bank. Francesca Centeno, Women's Royal Timball Champion. Zelinski goes back to back in Vegas. Junior Championship. Yannick Bongers is our new world champion, under 19. Wisconsin Women's Open Champion. Puerto Rican Open Women's 10 Ball Champ. Team Germany. Our world team champions. That's what it's all about. You've got the Las Vegas Open. It's going to be followed by the Mixed Doubles event, Apex Mixed Doubles Invitational, then the World 10 Ball. And the 10 pocketed off the break here from Lee Van Corteza, and that'll keep him at the table. Nothing easy on the one, though, Chris, but so much being handed out in terms of hardware here in the next week and a bit, isn't it? Special times. What a safety there. Cue ball on a string. A uh, quick update, too, while Co gets the slide rule out to figure this hit. 3 1 Beato is in front of FSR, looking to close that one out. Extension. So both the Filipinos on the hill in sets that would see them through to the finals. Wow, what control he has on the jump. That's insane. So beautiful. That's the exact word that Mika Eminen used when Federer Gorse played a jump shot. One ball corner. Bing bong. <laughs> Might need that jump cue again. attack on the left side of the one. He's called the five in the side pocket. Disaster for Co. He's really had the handcuffs the on. I've seen. First jump you've seen go awry. Yeah, took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> How many people would put the cue ball here on this shot? Uh, more than you'd think, but not by a lot. Landed over the seven. Enough to make life difficult for him. Oh, 
Wow. That was that was good. Lots of right English jacked up. Hit it straight in and then got it to just move. Oh my god. Beautiful. Now, does he have the angle to be able to use the 10 to hold for position to the 4? This is tricky. said the 10 I meant the 9 but this is a very ominous sign now for Ko he may not be getting out of his chair again other than to shake hands Seven in the same pocket. Forward for the eight. That should be it for this match. Um. And remember back to that first rack where he time fouled and we wondered whether or not that would be a bit of baggage that he'd be carrying around in this match. He didn't pack that bag, did he? And for nothing to seal the deal, Lee Van Corteza will be through to the final where he will sit back and wait and see if his countryman, Carlo Beato, can join him there. Terrific performance, Chris. I'll tell you what, you've got to be pretty impressed. I know I was. Yeah, it's so fluid when he's running out and he's working well with the table. Uh, it's been, it's a joy to watch, and I'm glad that we're going to be able to see him play again. And for Ko Pin Chung, we'll be able to see him play in the World 10 ball, correct? Absolutely. Yep, there's still a lot more pool coming your way, and we've got the final in a very short time. A couple hours away, folks, and we hope you're back. Join us for that final. It's going to be a special one. Not sure who he's playing yet, but you won't want to miss it. From Las Vegas, I want to thank you for joining us. For Chris Reinhold, I'm Jim Weich. All the very best, everyone.